Hey y'all, I'm Izzy Frank with Seeds to Success, the Louisiana Farm to School program. Welcome back to our video series, Sustainable School and Home Gardening. In our last video, we showed you how to take soil samples. Today, we're talking about what to do after you get those soil sample results. We'll go through reading your soil test report, how to amend your soil, and common nutrient deficiencies. Let's start with pH. This measures how acidic or alkaline your soil is. Most vegetables prefer a pH between 6.0 and 6.8. If your soil is too acidic, you may need to add lime. If it's too alkaline, you might need to add elemental sulfur. Why does this matter? Because if your pH is off, your plants can't absorb nutrients, even if they're already present in the soil. You also need to take note of each crop and the fertilizer recommendations on this report. Here you can see there are three different forms of nitrogen I could choose from to meet this crop's needs. You'll see that they do not recommend I add any phosphorus. There is already enough present in my soil, and I can add this much potassium to my garden. For those using organic practices, there is an extension guide from the University of Georgia to convert conventional fertilizers to organic fertilizers. You can Google it up or see the link in our description. If you need help reading your report, call your local extension office and an agent can help you interpret those results and build a plan. You can also reach out to the Soil Test and Plant Analysis Lab by calling 225-578-1219. So you may be wondering, why do they have just these three nutrients singled out here at the top? That brings us to our next point, macro and micronutrients. Macronutrients are called macro because plants need large amounts of these nutrients. There are six macronutrients, but the big three macronutrients are nitrogen for leafy growth, phosphorus for roots, flowers, and fruit, and potassium for overall plant function. These are the three numbers you see on most fertilizer bags, 13, 13, 13, 4, 3, 4, etc. That is referring to 13% nitrogen, 13% phosphorus, and 13% potassium. The other three macros are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. They're also included in your test results, just down at the bottom. Your test results will tell you if any of these are low. You can amend with OMRI certified fertilizers like blood meal for nitrogen, bone meal for phosphorus, or kelp meal or green sand for potassium. Then there are micronutrients, which are called micro because plants only need a small amount of these, but they are still essential. Deficiencies in these can lead to yellowing leaves, poor fruit set, or stunted growth. If you get the routine soil test, you will get all the macronutrients plus zinc and copper, two of the micronutrients. Unfortunately, we're not able to test for molybdenum and chlorine, but that's okay. If your soil is within the recommended pH range, you likely have those elements already present in your soil. If micronutrients are needed, you can add a micronutrient mix, like azomite. Now let's look at our organic matter test. We have 2.15% organic matter in this soil, which is pretty good considering we want at least 2% and the goal would be to achieve at least 5% organic matter in our soils. This can take some time, as organic matter is quite literally material that used to be living and has now fully broken down. Organic matter can start as leaves, manures, veggie scraps, etc. But to be able to safely add organic matter to your soil, it needs to have been fully composted meaning the compost reached a high enough temperature and sustained it for long enough to kill off any harmful microorganisms. Additionally, organic matter looks like this when it has fully broken down. See the difference between this compost that is fully broken down versus this bark that, yes, it's aged, but it's not yet at the stage of becoming organic matter. So how do we add more organic matter? You can add composted cow manure, composted mushrooms, peat moss, you can use cover crops. There's a lot of different ways that you can add materials to the soil that will break down and create organic matter. General amending practices include 
always following your test report's recommendations. Don't guess. Mix amendments into the top four to six inches of soil before planting. Add organic matter like compost regularly. It helps with nutrient availability and soil structure. Another option is to incorporate cover crops into your plan. And lastly, don't overdo it. More isn't always better. Overfertilizing can hurt your plants and your local waterways. Now, some common deficiencies we see in Louisiana gardens. Nitrogen deficiency. This looks like pale green or yellow leaves, especially the older ones down towards the lower part of the plant. Phosphorus deficiency. Stunted growth and purplish stems. Calcium deficiency, looking like blossom end rot on tomatoes or peppers. And magnesium deficiency, looks like yellowing between the veins of older leaves. These are all fixable, but only if you know what your soil needs, which is why testing and targeted amendments are so important. Healthy soil means healthy plants. That means better harvest, fewer pests, and more success in the garden. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and follow along for more tips in our sustainable school and home gardening series. Happy growing, y'all.